Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Tracy. I'm Papa. I'm Mimi. I'm Aunt Becky. I'm Kelly. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. Elgos. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. That's a big egg. Look at that bottom one. Wow. Watch out, double yokers coming through. What do these look like to you? They look like double yokers to me. Welcome back everyone. It's so nice to see you. As you can see, I'm having a great morning. We just got finished taking care of all the chores. Uh, and I thought it was a wonderful time for breakfast. As you can see, just cracked open two beautiful double yokers, and I'm about to start munching. There she is! Yeah. You found me! What are you doing? I'm eating a cookie. <laughs> mm. Now we've got plenty of stuff going on today, but to start off, I wanted to show you our wall and that we're getting ready to add more section of roof on. Now we do have a very big job of filling in behind this wall and thankfully all those rocks that we just picked out of the fields, this is going to be a perfect spot to put them. Now we are planning on adding in a whole bunch of drainage pipe here just to make sure that everything is good to go. Um, so that's going to be done in due time. But for now, we're really excited that we're gonna have plenty of fill to put behind the wall. Like I mentioned, plenty of stuff to do today, but we do have one big job that we're gonna be focusing on. And that big job brings me over here in front of the shop. Now this new piece of equipment here that is brand new to the farm is something you have not seen before, and we don't own it. We're renting it from a place called Zimmerman's. This is an Esch no-till drill, and we're gonna be using this to plant all of our beans. Well, not all the beans, not the green beans, the yellow beans, or the flat beans. This is just gonna be specifically for soybeans. Daniel went and picked up this piece of equipment yesterday. It is a beautiful one. And this is gonna make our soybean planting go very quickly. Now we don't raise a crazy amount of beans, but uh, we raise enough that it is gonna be a little trouble for us to plant with the equipment that we do have. We think that using this tool is gonna make everything go so much more smoothly. And the fact that we were able to rent one and get it here in time just makes everything so much better. We will have more on that in a few minutes. For now, I've got to get up here and help some customers. So what do you think of it, Daniel? It's a nice drill. I hope I know how to run it. Do you want it for low range or high range? We're looking to put down about 170,000 seeds per acre. That's about 63 pounds so per acre. Point so point. Uh, what we had to do was we had to change it from low range and the high range. So we had to move our gears around. Now we're all set to go. We just got to make sure everything else is run correctly and set up for the way we want it put the seed in and we'll be good. The only thing is, you guys know it can't be that simple for us. One of the big things that we do every year is a test plot and we're gonna be doing some soybeans in a test plot this year. So we've got a few different varieties of test plot beans that we're gonna be planting. Uh, so the beginning part is gonna be a little slow, but once we get past the test plot, uh, we'll be flying. Put the kinds together on the truck. Thirty. Thirty. 
Now, because my dad sells Pioneer Seed, he likes to make sure that the varieties he's selling to his customers are actually good varieties. So what we like to do every year is a lot of varieties in our test plot. So you can see every single one of these stacks is a different variety of beans. And we're gonna be doing our best to get them all planted today. And if we have no hiccups and we get through all these varieties, uh, we'll be moving on to getting the rest of our beans planted. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. So did you like riding down here in the tractor? Daniel. Yeah, you rode with Daniel. Was it fun? With Daniel. Yeah, but was it fun? With Daniel going. Where's Daniel going? He's planting the beans. I like beans. Here's some beans. Right there's some beans. The there's box. some beans. You want to walk? All right, let's walk. So did you have fun riding in the tractor? Yeah. Oh, good. Flowers? Yeah, I haven't seen any butterflies, but I'm sure we'll find one somewhere. Find one? Yeah. Now this is what's gonna be soaking up most of our time. After we finish a variety, we have to clean out the cedar. So we've got a shop back and we're sucking out all the seeds and then we gotta dump them back in the bag. about this taking a little bit of time the plan portion no problem it goes really really quick especially with this planter the cleaning out process and then putting in new seed that's where the time comes in My cousin Tyler mowing that off, making it look so nice. What a guy. I think he's excited about the test plot too. Now you may be sitting at home and wondering why we're even fiddling with all these different varieties because it does take a lot of time and it's not too efficient. There's a few good reasons. One of the reasons I already mentioned is my dad sells seeds. So the fact that we can share how everything's growing in the local area with the customers is a big bonus to us. Uh, but probably one of the biggest reasons that not many people know about is all of the seed that they gave us, we get to keep and plant. So for the most part, everybody is interested in the information about how everything grew, how everything looks. But when it comes to keeping all of the harvested beans, well, that goes to us. We don't have to give that back. So that's one of the bonuses of doing a test plot. You get some free seed to test out and everything that you harvest, you get to keep as profit. And that's pretty nice because sometimes they give you quite a bit of seed. If you've been following the channel for quite some time, you've seen us do many different test plots. And this has always been a big help to us. So the fact that we're doing another one this year was a no-brainer.
there we go. I got my little yellow flag in place. That marks the end of the current variety that we're planting. So everywhere that you see a flag, that is essentially where a new variety starts. So we've gone through, we've already done six varieties. We're moving pretty quickly. And these flags are more of a convenience. Um, it's easy for us if we're out here, we can just go over, look at the flags and see what we have planted where. Now, some of you may be wondering what happens if you lose one of the flags. That's not really a big deal because we started with our latest variety. So the variety that takes the longest to mature is all the way at the beginning. And as we go down through the field, the days to maturity are getting shorter. Some of you may be concerned and say, well, what happens if someone just goes out in your field and takes all your flags which i don't know why someone would do that that would be pretty interesting but it's not that big of a deal we have everything marked down on some paperwork so <laughs> it would literally delay us by five minutes from driving back to the farm like i mentioned the flags are for convenience and just to mark where the new varieties end or start in the beginning it may be difficult to tell the differences between varieties but as they start to grow a little bit it's much easier to tell so we will be continuing to put one of those flags at the end of each planting just so that we can keep everything in line we can make it easier on ourselves if someone comes moves the flags or even takes the flags I it's not a big deal at all. I mean, it is what it is. We'd probably be like, ah oh, man, where'd our flags go? Then it, we'd get over it pretty quickly. How you feeling about your test plot, dad? Coming along good. That planter works pretty good. We might have to get one of those. I can't afford one of those. <laughs> Are you talking about Daniel or what Both. he's operating? Both. I'll tell you what, that Daniel, for being the tiniest, he sure does not eat like it. That boy can put away the food, especially pizza and burgers. Kid eats everything, a lot of everything. What's his secret? We've been making some really good progress. We have been moving through these varieties. I believe we have two more and then we are finished off with the test plot. That, that's awesome. And the fact that we might be able to get this done this morning, whoo wee, we're excited. Daniel is finishing off that last variety and we are now finished with the test plot. Successful day. It doesn't matter what happens the rest of the day. It was successful. Lunchtime, lunchtime. We are having sandwiches and then Grammy also baked cookies. Lots of cookies. It's gonna be a good lunch. Once we got finished off with lunch, we got Daniel all loaded up with seed. So he's off planting. I uh, don't necessarily know which farm he's at, but he's gonna be hopping around all over the place. Beans is something we don't plant too, too much of. So hopefully we'll be able to get all the planting done today. That would be really, really nice because the longer we have that piece of equipment, the more money it costs us. So if we can use it and then get it back to them, oh, that'll be wonderful. So that leads into what are we gonna be doing the rest of the day? Well, we don't really have anything scheduled. Myself and dad are kind of on standby if Daniel needs any assistance. We've got them all filled up with seeds so we don't have to worry about that at the moment. So my plan is to help out as many customers as possible and do basically anything that needs to be done here at the home farm. Hey, what's up, little cows? So for our afternoon, it didn't get too crazy around here. I just ended up working here at the farm market. And when I did sneak away, it was to mow my grass. So that's, that's pretty intense. I did have some plans to take the drone out and fly it over the cattle and fly it around with Daniel. But then I learned um, I don't have the correct connections at the moment. So I'm gonna have to get some new cables. I was pretty bummed out too, cause I had the drone all charged up. I had backup battery. I had the control panel charged up. It's just one of those days. I am now home. Lauren and I just got finished making and eating dinner. It was very good. We made chicken tikka masala. Thankfully when I got home, I had some time. So I was able to play with Callie a little bit. We went on an adventure, but right now I gotta get over here. It's okay, Ronnie. Babies were fussing a little bit. They probably wanna be held. So we'll hold them. Did you have a good day? Yeah, he had a good day. Oh, it's at the end of the day, though. We're going to hang out as a family. We're going to spend some time together. Did you miss me? I missed you. We're going to spend some time together. We're going to hold both the babies. And that's going to be it for the night. We might watch some baseball, right? Take old Phillies. Like and Callie's eating a cupcake. It's it's a good night. You want to come over and say good night? Good night. Good night, yeah. Uh, this is where we're going to be ending the video today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to hit 200,000. 200,000 subscribers. We're also trying to get as many people to like the video as possible, right? Say goodnight, Ronnie. Say goodnight, Lily. Daddy's about to pick you up. Say goodnight, Callie. Goodnight. Alrighty, everybody. This is where we're gonna end the video today. We will see you next time. Buh bye bye Bye-bye.